So let's do an intro. Hey, Llama, let's just show these real quick. Okay, yes, these are my lugs. They look so similar. Today we're gonna be talking about what to do when your family or your friends or whoever you're close to is that they're not educated on eating disorders they don't know how to handle it they, they don't know, know how, how to talk to you. <laughs> they don't know how to support you they don't know how to talk yes. to you they're doing all the wrong thing they're not fucking <laughs> educated this video is going to be all over the place but it's got some important content for people who are struggling with eating disorders and with having a support system or lack of support system And this is something that has been really hard on a lot of people with eating disorder, especially if you live at home and like maybe your parents found out that you do have an eating disorder. They are uneducated and that is why they are <laughs> watching you sip your coffee. And that is why they are acting this way, acting kind of harshly probably. Quick little thing, what to do if your parent is is doing these scenarios. It doesn't have to be a parent, it could be yes. like whoever you're... A guardian, a sibling. Whoever, a spouse, whoever spouse. your support system is or yes. is supposed to be. So this is for our disordered friends out there. Yeah, we're just gonna give some scenarios how you should approach that person if they are acting badly towards your recovery. It does, uh, eat, uh, eat. Yeah, it's scary. Excuse me. I would like to have a sit and chat with you about why I don't appreciate you force feeding me food. The important thing to remember is that you may not be able to change the, this person's behavior. There are going to come times where you're just going to have to roll with it, accept it, and use what you know. You can educate them a bit, that's great, but if this person is like really hard head, then they're going to be like set in their ways and you're just going to have to accept that but we're gonna help you deal with it. Okay, so the first thing we wanna talk about is when this person, people, maybe are in denial that you have a problem or they think that it's not a problem or they think it's a choice or something. Or they think you've kind of grown out of it, like you've stopped and like it's not gonna come back. That is really hard to deal with. You can try to tell this person multiple times. I have trouble with food, I have trouble exercising, I have trouble not purging. Just saying that you have trouble with food in general is kind of a huge thing and I applaud on you. Good job for saying that. Woo! But it can be hard for the other person because they're just like, Just stop having a problem. Unfortunately, some people just can't understand that. When that's the case, first thing to do is to try your best to not take to heart what this person is saying because you have a disorder you can't just stop you need to get help you won't go away overnight it's not how it works you know you know it. Mm -hmm. they don't know either way if you're admitting to someone that you do have a trouble eating and they're like just stop and they're kind of like in denial of your disordered thoughts you should still want to recover no matter who believes you or not you still deserve to recover so here's a fun thing that happens <clears throat> <laughs> Something that happens a lot, uh, especially if you have a restrictive eating disorder, people try to force feed you. And that is not okay. <laughs> and if somebody is saying to you, If you don't eat, this is gonna happen. Just try your best to, to get something in you. It's not okay for somebody to try and force things into your body. And that's something you have to work on yourself. Yes. It's something you have to be able to do yourself. Mm -hmm. is reach the point where you can feed yourself. Yes. If you're recovering and you want to make sure you're eating enough calories, it's good to have someone else track the food for you, but make sure they're not forcing you to eat mm -hmm. because you're willing to recover and you're like, hey, would you mind tracking my calories and making my food and just, and I will eat it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure whoever you say that to will be like, oh yes, like that is okay. But if they're like, Eat this or else. Then that's that's not good, and that doesn't make the person with an eating disorder feel any better. Maybe you can say to this person, if this is not your disorder talking, I'm not feeling hungry right now. I will eat in a bit. And do follow through with that. It's a thin line between what you want and what your eating disorder wants. So you have to make sure that it's what you want. Mm -hmm. We're not professionals, but professionals know what they're doing. <laughs> Because they're professional. Drink every time it's a professional. 
if your family or whoever it is is being very aggressively up your ass, <laughs> for lack of a better Just term, try first to understand that this is coming out of a place of concern and they want you to not be engaging in these behaviors. However, it can be difficult when somebody's constantly watching you and constantly checking in on you, but do try to explain to the person that you need your space and your privacy. And though they don't want to give it to you, you should have like a sit down conversation with them and maybe you have some things that you want to, what's that word? Compromise. I will do this, this, and this, but I also want to have the freedom to do this and this and this. I will follow these rules, but as long as you respect and understand that I want to be able to do, I don't know, like leave the house, have a party. And there's a fine line there too. If you are actively seeking treatment for your eating disorder, then whoever is in your life, it's more important that they're letting you figure this out, not on your own, but it's important for you to be learning what you need to do and how to take care of yourself. But if you're not actively in treatment, then I think it, it's more okay for the person to be not totally like in your face 24 seven, but keeping more of a watchful eye on you. If you are getting the help that you need, then try to gently explain to this person that I'm getting the help I need. I appreciate that you are, you care enough to be watching me this much, but I need my space and I need to figure some things out for myself. Hopefully that made sense. I think sit down and chats are good. Not just these videos, but but sitting down and chatting with whomever you may be having an issue with. But like a sit down and chat, not like a sit down, they yell at you, you cry. We don't want that. We want you to kind of do most of the talking and we want them to understand mm -hmm. and maybe ask them to ask you questions if you're willing to answer some. Questions are a good way to get the other person to understand a lot better because they have this concern. They're like, oh, why are you doing this? And you're like, because this, this, or my eating disorder says this. And they're like, oh, oh, okay, I get it now. Like, it's not just you, mm -hmm. it's your illness is doing this to you. But if you're not ready for questions, just kind of explain as much as you can. This is an important one. Whatever the issue is, especially if you're underage, if they refuse to help you get help. Because if your support system is not getting you the help you need, especially if you are a child, then you need to get out there and find someone who will. If you're underage and your parents or whomever you are living with won't get you help, the best thing to do is go to another adult, a teacher, a counselor. You need to tell someone because that's not okay. Um, they're not taking care of you and you need help. Be honest and tell them what's going on. If you are an adult and your support system still doesn't support you going to treatment, you gotta take matters into your own hands. The best first step is going to see your GP, your general practitioner. And if you don't have a family doctor, find one because referrals. <laughs> Because referrals. If there's people who aren't able to help you, you need to take action for yourself. And you might think, oh, it's not that bad. I'll do fine for a while. It's okay. That's not you talking. You're That's eating. your eating disorder talking. Your eating disorder is going to always, always tell you you're not sick enough to get help. <laughs> you have to go to your gut half of your brain and if it says you need help, like you're sick of feeling this way and you need to take matters into your own hands and go find an adult or a professional and just get the help you need. If you don't like a certain kind of help, Say you don't like it. If you don't like a therapist, you shouldn't just stick with that therapist. Mm -hmm. You gotta find something that clicks. Find something that works with you, man. Sometimes it takes a while to find what works for you, but don't give up because you will find something. Maybe these things that work for you don't work in the beginning. Try and stick with it for a while. I don't even know how many therapists I saw. I found one 
who I almost didn't go to see because I was like, I'm not gonna see another therapist I don't like. And she ended up being like the most amazing human ever. So keep looking, keep going, don't give up. Um, and another thing is you may need something that you don't like and you don't want. An example of this is inpatient treatment. Nobody wants to go inpatient, but unfortunately you might need to go inpatient and it sucks, but if it's what you need, you need to follow through with that. Your life is on the line. You can do these things that may be hard and like a lot of hard work. It might be your only option. Moral of the story, get treatment because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this and you are needing some support and help or maybe you don't know where to start, reach out to us because we've been through the ringer a few times. We've been to a lot of treatment. We've been to a lot of treatment. I've been to inpatient. She's been to outpatient. Reach out. We're not professionals, obviously, but we have a lot of experience. If you don't have a good support system, you gotta, you gotta find one and that could come from professionals or other people in your family or it could be your friends or roommate. Uh, teachers, hell, teachers were my support system for a long time and that's okay. I think this was more of like a ranty, multi-subject yeah. video. This video is all over the place. Hope you liked it. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment what you want to see next. Also check out our Instagram, we post there a lot and we like to hear from you guys. We always get excited when we get a new comment Yay! or a new follower because it means our little community, which is very, very tiny right now, is growing. But I love it! Ooh. Shout out to the watcher who said that they loved our channel. Oh, that one? Um, that was a really great message to I hear. I cry! We hope we reach more people who... Yeah! find this content helpful. Don't yeah. hesitate to reach out to us, to anyone. Reach out because you're worth it. Yes, you are. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye.